So we're in Matthew 19 here today. And Matthew 19 has sort of three little sections, at least that's the way the, the translators divide them out. They're tough sections, but they all center around something very similar. They all center around culture. They're driven by culture, the culture of the day. And, and, and they all come to Jesus for different reasons, different motivations. Um, in the first section, you've got Pharisees come to test Jesus with a, a question that's still a challenge even today. The question is, you know, is it lawful to divorce someone? And Jesus answers the question, not by hammering folks who get a divorce, but instead by uh, reorienting the question to what God desires. That is, God desires a one man, one woman marriage relationship. If you're going to get married and do this, it's one man, one woman, uh, till death do us part. That his desire is that a uh, lifetime union, if you will. This is what he put together in the beginning and what we broke as human beings. So when the Pharisees come to question Jesus and test him with a cultural question, Jesus reorients to what the Father desires. He actually does this in all three sections. In the second section, there's um, people are bringing little children to Jesus and Jesus and Jesus' disciples are are saying, you know, stop doing this. This is not, not, not good for Jesus to do. He doesn't have time for him. He, his time is better spent with more important people. And yet Jesus reorients this again. Um, the cultural perspective was children are weak, um, drains on resources, and um, are, 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 are the least valuable members of society. Jesus reorients this to what the Father would desire. Let the children come unto me because they are valuable in the kingdom. As a matter of fact, the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Um, he reorients this, the, the cultural perspective, reorients at least his disciples' perspective to be able to say, these have value and worth. What the world deems weakest and least valuable, the kingdom finds most valuable. And I wonder if that helps us today where we live in a culture that um, values productivity. Not, not so much different from the ancient Near Eastern culture, actually. What do we have to learn from this? Who do we see as weak, as a drain on resources, as the least valuable in society? And what does our God have to say about that? And then finally, uh, this third one is interesting in that it starts with a, a, a person who wants to inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's a rich person um, who wants to inherit it. And Jesus, um, Jesus you know, in, in another gospel, looks at this person, loves this individual, but he's got a problem. His problem is that uh, he's trusting his wealth over trusting God. And that's really the, the issue is, is this, this man reminds us that even when we come to God, if we're trusting something other than God on a consistent basis, trusting our wealth, our righteousness, if we will, that we're better than the other guy, or, um, or our power or something else, if that's what we're trusting, instead of God, that's a problem for our eternal destination. The bigger thing with this, perhaps the overarching narrative in this section and, and what we need to, to, to listen to from Jesus is, um, well, two things. One is Jesus doesn't go out searching for these cultural battles. He's not looking for a fight. All of these cultural battles come to him. And the second thing is they come to him. When we are finding ourselves struggling in, in our culture and we've got questions that are coming in from our culture, uh, that we've got because we live in the culture or because others live in the culture and, and, we're, and we're getting challenged perhaps or, or people are asking questions. We first got to go to Jesus. What is his, what is his answer? What is his response? Um, and that's where we'll find our, our best bet for uh, a biblical cultural answer to cultural questions. Because we don't, uh, don't want to find ourselves answering cultural questions out of the culture. That's what, what I do at least. I find myself in, so influenced by the culture. Um, in order to answer cultural questions. And, and my, my first 
thought, well, it needs to be. I'll step back from the culture and see, well, what does Jesus have to say about this? And then the, the, the second thing is, uh, then let his answer guide the response, guide my response in the culture. We want to let Jesus' words, Jesus' answers guide our response to what's going on in our culture today. Just as they did 2,000 years ago for the disciples when they were, when, when Jesus was, when, when questions about the culture were being brought to him. So, hope that's helpful for you today. Next time we tackle chapter 20 of Matthew's Gospel. Take care.